Diana's jewels, Megan's monogram Dior, and who could forget that Oprah interview outfit? Um, Alana, what about the most extra bride of the year? Welcome to Royal Roundtable. I'm Page Six Style Editor Alana. And I'm the head of social media, Kristen. Believe it or not, 2021 is almost done and we couldn't ring in the new year without a look back at the best royal style moments that rocked the headlines this year. That's right, we're talking all the best looks from Meghan, Kate, and another royal bride that we definitely could not forget about. So we gotta kick things off with the beautiful white Carolina Herrera dress the Duchess of Sussex wore in the photo announcing her second pregnancy in February. The brand's creative director, Wes Gordon, who's a longtime friend of Meghan's, custom made it for her back when she was pregnant with Archie. A royal rewear. I loved everything about this announcement. It was so casual and laid back, kind of like the Sussexes new life in California. Well, you know, more casual and laid back than their life in England was anyway. From the sustainable dress to the photo being taken on an iPad, it was all very relatable. A little less relatable, being besties with Oprah. And next up, we've got the black and white Armani dress Megan chose for her bombshell interview with the TV legend in March. Wait, that was this year? Amazingly, yes. Wow, the interview that rocked the world. So at the time, a spokesperson for the Duchess confirmed that she picked this particular look for symbolic purposes. It features a lotus flower, which has long been associated with the idea of rebirth and resilience because this beautiful flower flourishes despite being rooted in muddy water. Considering that Meghan spoke about her almost unsurvivable time in the palace during the interview, it's not too hard to draw the parallels here. How could we not? discuss this particular look. My favorite part of it was that she was wearing Princess Diana's diamond tennis bracelet. Harry and Meghan wanted his mother to be with them during this difficult moment, as she famously dealt with similar issues to Meghan, and she most certainly was. Kristen, I love that she wore that bracelet too. I thought it was the perfect finishing touch. And while we're on the topic of Diana, we have to discuss her niece, Lady Kitty Spencer's fashion-packed wedding in July. To marry billionaire businessman Michael Lewis, she wore five, count them, five, custom dresses by Dolce & Gabbana. The night before saying I do, her floral embroidered blue tulle gown and cape served as her something blue. She then walked down the aisle in a white Victorian inspired puff sleeve gown before changing into an off the shoulder hand painted floral look for dinner. For dancing, she picked a metallic dress covered with gold and silver beads and come Sunday, she kept the party going in this cut work look covered with tiny sequins, applique flowers, and ribbons. The most extra bride award of the year goes to... Neither of us, I'll tell you that. Definitely not us, it was Lady Kitty. Some may say this was a bit tone deaf to pull off during a global pandemic, but hey, at least we got some entertainment out of it. Imagine being so rich that you could afford five custom Dolce & Gabbana dresses. Most of us can't even afford one off the rack. I sure can't. Okay, but that's not the only wedding we have to talk about today. In September, James Middleton, that'd be Kate's little brother, married Elise Thévenet in her native France. And the bride's something borrowed was actually her wedding dress. The same lacy off the shoulder look her mother-in-law wore down the aisle back in 1980. Well, definitely from one extreme, Lady Kitty, to the next. While this is not my favorite dress, the top looks like my grandma's lace tablecloth, the sentiment behind it is very sweet. And again, this is a super sustainable way to do a wedding dress. And I also do know James is a very down-to-earth guy, and it seems Alizé must be the same. They are massive dog lovers like myself, and there were even a bunch of dogs at the wedding, which in my mind, you just cannot be. Ugh, I love a pet-friendly wedding. Next up, we have yet another nod to the late Princess Diana from Meghan, this time at September's Global Citizen Live in NYC. The Duchess of Sussex accessorized her white Valentino mini with Dior's iconic Lady Dior bag, a favorite style of dyes that was even named in her honor. Meghan's was even monogrammed with her title, DSSOS. Okay, full disclosure, I may have dragged my husband and my dog to go wait outside of the Carlisle during this trip to just possibly catch a glimpse of our favorite royal couple, but I didn't see them. I was unsuccessful. But what was successful was this accessorizing. So chic. Moving right along, who could forget Kate's knockout look at the No Time to Die premiere in September? She epitomized Bond girl glamour in this glittering gold cape gown by Jenny Packham, embellished all over with sequins and beadwork. Might just be my new all-time favorite look. I mean, I could not agree anymore. And you know, Alana, I used to take some issue with a lot of Kate's fashion choices, 
But lately she has just been giving the people what they want. Over the past couple of years, her looks have been turned up. She is looking like an absolute queen and we're not getting all of these extremely, you know, conservative, sophisticated looks that we were seeing before. We're, we're seeing her have some fun. And I think, you know, people are just loving every moment of it, especially our fans on social who commented effortlessly and naturally elegant. And wow, 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 four wows. Stunning, <laughs> this will be iconic. And Kate had another major red carpet moment in October. For the Earthshot Prize Awards, for which guests were asked not to buy anything new, she brought back the gorgeous Lavender Alexander McQueen gown she last wore at a July 2011 BAFTA event, just three months after her wedding to Prince William. She gave it a little update by swapping the original sparkly white belt for a gold one, but I gotta say, the gown looks just as great 10 years later. I mean, I always love Kate and McQueen, and I always have loved this gown. I love the, gap, the lavender color, but I did, slightly prefer the white belt to the gold one. But you know what? I'm not holding it against her because she just looks beautiful. And again, the color is perfect. And speaking of amazing colors, Megan in red. I absolutely loved this Scarlett Carolina Herrera gown she chose for the Salute to Freedom Gala in November. From the neckline to the dramatic train, everything about this was show-stopping. And of course, her dress perfectly matched her poppy pin and nod to fallen veterans. It's so good and a far cry from the conservative look she had to wear as an official royal family member. Oh yes, I mean, va va voom. We are not used to seeing Megan in silhouettes this sexy. She looks like a million bucks. I mean, I, I wanna wear this dress. This is stunning. The shape of it is gorgeous. Um, you know, and people on social really, really loved it too. With one person commenting, she looked stunning and that is the perfect timeless piece for any event. With another person adding, dress to Megan, you look lovely and the dress is hot in all caps. Honestly, how great would this gown look at a fancy holiday party? Definitely beats the usual ugly Christmas sweater. Oh my gosh, yes. Well, that's a wrap on our royal fashion coverage for 2021. See you next year for some more headline-making royal fashion moments. Bye. Bye.